Raymond paid a dollar this week to be first priority in this week's episode of Rick Answers His Email. So here's his question. He's apparently trying to send email with Thunderbird and in Windows 7 but not having any luck. He can send email in Yahoo but not images. So I don't understand your question, unfortunately, Raymond. You didn't give me enough detail. If you're using Yahoo and you're not paying the extra money for the POP3 access that they offer as a, as a premium service, you cannot send email through Yahoo using Thunderbird or any other third-party program. And if you're, not have, if you're having trouble sending images in Yahoo, I think you're just not understanding the attachment process because when you click Attach a File, you'll be able to pull up an option to browse for the photos that you want to send. John is using the Windows Live Mail as his email program with Windows 7, but having some problems getting some attachments to open. Because you're using a new computer with Windows 7, John, you probably need to figure out what are the extensions, the last three characters of the attachment that you're receiving, and find out what program is needed to open those. So John, go to my website, helpmerick.com, click Links right over here in the right-hand corner, and then right on the links and resources section here, you're going to find two different websites, the file extension finder and the file extension database. And they'll, you'll be able to search for those three characters on your attachments to figure out what programs you need to install on your new Windows 7 in order to open those attachments. The most common one is the PowerPoint viewer that a lot of folks don't have right off the bat to view the slideshows that people pass around to each other. And I also have the PowerPoint viewer right on this same page where you'll find the file extensions. And that may be one that will get you over the hump right away. Natalie asks, what does default mean? Default means just something that automatically gets chosen for you. For example, if you have a Windows computer, as you do, Windows Vista, and you double click on a picture in your My Pictures folder or in your email, it's automatically going to open with the default program if you didn't change it which is the Windows Viewer. You can choose in some cases what becomes the default like for example in a word processing document a lot of times in Microsoft Word or other word processors you'll have a 10 or 12 point default font size. If you want to make it a 14 point you can go through the menus and choose 14 point as your default. Bonnie you can go ahead and get the Windows 7 update the upgrade and you should get that because you pay that's part of what you paid for and you don't have to install it you just have to actually get the paperwork in before your January 31st deadline so that you get the product but you don't have to install it until you're comfortable that all the programs you want to use will work with Windows 7 USS Rover has two problems looks like his first problem is getting his hard drive to be recognized in his tablet PC his tablet laptop and in USS Rover, this is a little bit beyond my scope. I don't do a lot with hardware. Could be a BIOS problem. You might want to mess around in the BIOS to make sure that it's looking for the proper drives. You, I'm sure you've already checked your connections. That's always another basic troubleshooting step to take. But beyond that, I think you're going to need someone with some everyday hardware experience to be able to help you out with this particular problem. As for your Ubuntu 9.1, you said it works great except for the stylus. Ubuntu has been making strides in getting their products to work in the tablet world, but it's still pretty new. You do have to do a lot of thumbing through for each individual tablet, thumbing through the bulletin boards at Ubuntu.com to be able to figure out how to get your particular tablet to work completely. Stan, the Open Office program does have a find and replace function just like Excel does, and you'll find it in the same place. Just go to Edit find and replace and you'll get the little menu to help you get through using find and replace in open office. Kalen has an interesting question says he's 10 and would like to know how to know if someone is scamming you. Well the best thing to do I can tell you Kalen is you need to get your parents involved and whatever you think might be happening show them what's going on and they'll be able to help you figure that out because if you think that there's a possibility that somebody's scamming you they probably are. Parag has a question about improving laptop performance. And if you're using Windows Vista, the number one thing is RAM. If you have anything less than 3 gigabytes of RAM with Windows Vista, you've got to put more RAM on that computer. That's going to help out a ton. Secondly, you can use the tool called msconfig that's built into all Windows versions to pair out some of the things that start up automatically. So don't get a bunch of stuff running in your system tray and at startup so that you can have better performance from the get-go. And then thirdly, don't use too heavy 
of security products. Use either the Microsoft Security Essentials, AVG, or Avast as a lightweight but very good internet security for your computer. Doc, if you can get into safe mode, you can back up your data from safe mode. So just get a USB flash drive and back up all your data via safe mode, and then you can do more troubleshooting. If you're getting into safe mode, then it's probably not a hardware problem, and you just need to do more soft software troubleshooting. Maybe you have a virus, maybe you have spyware, but at least if your data is safe, you can be more aggressive with your software troubleshooting. I have no clue what this statement means. I've never heard the term reverse an Acrobat PDF page. And I've looked at the site that you sent, and again, I don't know what you would want to do that for or what that means, so I can't help you. Sorry. Dane, I've noticed some of the same problems with Internet Explorer 8, particularly opening windows, opening links in new windows instead of new tabs, which is the much preferred way to do your browsing. So I have not found a solution for it. I've gone in and checked to open new links in the tab of the current window. It doesn't seem to hold. As far as the autofill, there is no other options except on and off on the autofill. So if you're having a lot of problems with Internet Explorer 8, I would do what I do and not use it. Use Mozilla Firefox and Google Chrome instead. Tim, you have marked that you're using Windows 7, and Windows 7 networking is not proving to be as easy as they had hoped it would be. I think if all of your computers are Windows 7, you'll be able to see things wireless and wired exactly the same way. But with Vista and even more so with Windows 7, whether you're connected wired or wirelessly, your computer has different permissions. So you need to go into the network and sharing center of your Windows 7 and configure that on both the wired and the wireless, you have the same permissions and the same security set up from the Windows standpoint. What you're referring to in your question, I believe, Joanne, is the fact that a lot of new computers are coming with widescreen monitors. Widescreen monitors have very high resolution, and when you're viewing a web page, most web pages are configured to only show a certain number of pixels in width. So not all of your pages are going to stretch from end to end. So no matter what browser you use, it's not going to matter. It all has to do with the resolution, how many pixels your computer can show. So don't worry that you're not filling from horizontal from end to end because not all web pages can do that. The only way you can get it to look like that is to lower the resolutions of your monitor, but you don't want to do that. You want to keep the high resolution and just know that that's the reason. You can remember to use the control on your keyboard and the scroll wheel on your mouse to make things larger or smaller. Jana, unfortunately there is no way to resize photos when you send them from iPhoto via email. The only way to do that is to first export a photo in a new size and then attach that photo via the iPhoto. So it's actually quite a few extra steps. If you want to, you can try Picasa for Mac and the Picasa for Mac does have the option of resizing the photo on the fly as you attach it to email. Well, that's all we have for this week. I will probably not have another episode until after the holidays, so please keep writing and I'll answer as many as I can when I return from the holidays.